How to determine the marketing budgets for your cleaning business. Guys, this is a very important question that you're gonna have to ask yourself at some point. And people have lots of different answers. Some will say it should be a percentage of your revenue. Other people will say to follow a, a certain formula. And some people will just give you an arbitrary number for what your budget should be every month. But in this video, I'm not gonna give you any of that. In fact, I'm gonna keep this pretty open-ended. Rather, provide you some different things to consider so that you can come to a decision on yourself because choosing a marketing budget, there's a lot of variability. And one of those first things that I'm gonna get into is a question that you need to ask yourself and that is how quickly do you wanna scale? So let's go back to the percentage example. This is a very common one that you'll hear people say, which is that it should be somewhere between five to 10% of your revenue. And then maybe for more competitive markets or faster growing industries, it should be closer to that 20% mark. Now, this is a very decent percentile range assuming you're already generating some consistent cash flow. But I'm gonna make a case for why this percentage is actually a bad idea. Let's say that you're a brand new company and you only have a handful of clients or even less. If you're following that 10% rule, but you're only making a few hundred or even a couple thousand dollars a month, that's gonna leave you such an insignificant amount of marketing budget that you're just probably not gonna get very much results with that small budget. Now, as long as you're okay with growing at a very modest pace, that's fine. But if you're somebody who's looking to scale to 10K a month, 20K a month, 40K a month in a shorter time frame, having $100 a month is just not gonna cut it. Now, similarly, let's say you're a cleaning business who's doing very well for yourself. You know, that revenue number could be whatever you deem as, as successful to yourself. But if you're already generating a lot of clients every month from word of mouth, you have your cleaner schedules full, cash is coming in, business is coming in, everything is great. Then again, you might not necessarily need to reach that ceiling of what your marketing budget is. You could probably be a lot less than that, assuming you're happy with the current growth and fulfillment of your company. Now, the next point I wanna get into is long-term ROI versus short-term ROI. And something that I've noticed to be very common after speaking with hundreds of cleaning business owners is that the newer folks tend to focus a lot more so on the short-term ROI, meaning they're always asking themselves, how much money can I make today? How much money am I gonna put in my pocket after the cleaning that I do today or this week? And when you're a newer company, this is very understandable because you have a lot of overhead. You know, you have to pay your cleaners, pay for supplies, payroll, all of that stuff. So you tend to be more price sensitive. And when there's not a lot of revenue coming in, Every dollar that goes in versus out really counts. The problem with this is in order to make an immediate ROI or a 30 day ROI, whatever you want to call it, you need to really make sure that you have many different boxes checked. So one of those boxes is going to have dialed in marketing, you know, being able to acquire leads at a reasonable price. Then comes your sales. You're going to need to be closing a good chunk of those leads that are coming in. Otherwise, you're not going to make any money. And then the third point is what you're charging. The economics of your business is huge. So many people are undercharging their service and they don't even know it. So if you're not charging high prices, it's going to be a lot harder or perhaps even impossible to make a return on your investment. And the paradox is that most beginners don't have all of these boxes checked, if any. Now, focusing more so on longer term ROI is really where the value in a cleaning business is. And let me explain why. Whether you're in residential cleaning or commercial cleaning, one of the benefits of this industry is that we get to attract recurring revenue, meaning once we close a client or a contract, they're going to be paying your business every month for the next two years, three years, 10 years, whatever your typical lifetime value is. Lots of other similar industries don't have this advantage. You know, if you take something like carpet cleaning, for example, sure, those jobs might be more higher ticket per job, but the typical carpet cleaning client maybe uses a service once per year on average. So they don't have that advantage of recurring revenue. So with seasoned cleaning businesses, I've seen these folks to focus a lot more long-term revenue where they're actually willing to break even or perhaps even lose a little bit of money to acquire a new client because they know that that client is going to pay their business for the next 24 months and that's really where they're gonna make their money. And if you don't believe me, let's just do some simple math together. Let's say your average clean is valued at $200 and you know that the typical recurring client is on a bi-weekly service. So they use your service two times per month. So that's $400 per month. And we know that 18 months tends to be the average industry duration for how long a typical client stays with you. Could be less than that, could be more than that, but let's just say it's 18 months. So if we do the math over the course of a lifetime, one recurring client is earning your business $7,200. Now ask yourself, 
how much are you willing to pay to acquire a $7,200 client? Once you see the value in this, it allows you to look at your budget a little bit differently. And as the famous Dan Kennedy said, the company that can spend the most to acquire a customer wins. Now, the third important point that I wanna get into with determining your marketing budget is going to be time investments. How much time are you willing to invest to learn specific skill sets or to do the marketing yourself? You know, is, is spending three hours a day going on YouTube and learning how to do SEO or run Facebook ads or do email marketing yourself, is that worth your time? I can't answer that for you. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. The truth is, if you're gonna be doing the marketing yourself, you are going to have to sacrifice time into learning these skill sets and to manage campaigns and all that stuff. So if spending a thousand dollars, let's say a month on outsourcing this is more costly than you doing it yourself, then that's gonna determine who should really be doing the marketing. Generally speaking, beginners tend to have more time on their hands, so they're probably better off doing the marketing themselves. Whereas more advanced cleaning business owners, they tend to have less time on their hands, so they would rather outsource this just like how they outsource the cleaning role, getting more texts, they outsource the sales, et cetera. To wrap this all up, we obviously wanna be making a positive return on our investment with marketing. And some key takeaways that you could take from this video is that if you're a newer cleaning business, it's probably gonna be harder for you to get a positive return on your investment especially if you're just focusing on that immediate ROI and your budget's really gonna come down to how aggressively you wanna grow. That's a question that only you can answer yourself. 